Of all the queer and fabulous denizens of the Shivering Sea, however, the greatest are the Ice Dragons. These colossal beasts, many times larger than the Dragons of Valyria, are said to be made of living ice, with eyes of pale blue crystal and vast translucent wings, through which the moon and stars can be glimpsed as they wheel across the sky. Whereas common dragons, if any dragon can truly be said to be common, breathe flame, ice dragons supposedly breathe a cold and a chill so terrible that it can freeze a man solid in half a heartbeat. Sailors from half a hundred nations have glimpsed these great beasts over the centuries, so mayhaps there is some truth behind the tales. Archmaester Margate has suggested that many legends of the North, freezing mist, ice ships, Cannibal Bay, and the like, can be explained away as distorted reports of ice dragon activity. In this video, I want to discuss if we're going to get to see ice dragons in House of the Dragon. Before I jump into any of that, please do me a massive favor and slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 69420. <laughs> uh. Alright, so one of the biggest things to know going into this series is that there are, at any given time, 20 dragons that participate in the... Dance of the Dragons, or the death of the Targaryen dynasty, basically. They never fully recovered from this. And in this show in particular, we're going to get to see many dragons of many different sizes, many different colors. A lot of people complain that the colors of Daenerys' dragons weren't as bright and as beautiful as they're described in the books. And a lot of people think that that's because of, well, you know, CG reasons. Uh, they wanted to make it look as realistic as possible. And obviously, if these dragons are supposed to be real creatures, well, you can take color patterns from real lizards that exist in, in, in uh, you know, nature. So they tried to sort of keep the colors like more of a flake of their scale where like in certain light you can really see in the cream or you can really see the green in Rhaegal or the black and red of Drogon or the, the cream of, of Viserion. It, 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 I think Daenerys' dragons looked amazing, but this new series has so many dragons, one of the ways to distinguish them is by color. Obviously size works, but when they're in the air and sort of battling it out, you can't really tell, you know, ex except for particular uh, dragon battles where, you know, one of them is the size of Balerion almost, and then the other one is a newer dragon that hasn't been around as long. Unless you're doing something like that, a lot of these dragons are similar sizes. So one of the ways to differentiate between the two of them is by having their colors bright and beautiful, much like how they're described in the books. Um, and another thing I think of note is that the main story itself you know, they're obviously doing the flashbacks and we're getting kind of like a dual timeline for the first season, at least, and maybe for the next couple of seasons. Um, but the fact that they're telling sort of every facet of this story and they want to make it as like as broad and, and, and as like, I guess, as world built as Game of Thrones, they need to expand on what, you know, previously existed in Game of Thrones and then also, you know, make the feel of this show even greater because it's, you know, it comes out after it. Uh, they could focus on the little mysteries, like the ice dragons. Like, obviously, we got an ice dragon in Game of Thrones, but it was not... Viserion being brought back by the Night King is not what the ice dragons are described in the book. They're literally described as actual dragons. As a matter of fact, the reason why there's no evidence of them existing is because they're said to be made of full ice. So when you kill one of those motherfuckers, they melt. So there's literally no proof of them. But just sort of like, uh, I guess, adding credence, because remember, Maesters from that quote that I read from A World of Ice and Fires, even the maesters themselves say that, you know, some of those mysteries, like the Shivering Sea and all of this, 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 like, convoluted mess and rumors that goes along with it can be explained away by ice dragons. So if that's the case, this new series, House of the Dragon, should take liberties and sort of expand on that. Maybe we get a side character who doesn't actually exist in House of the Dragon. Maybe they get to go pretty far up north. Maybe we hear rumors of when Alicent went north and her dragon refused to take her past the wall. Maybe they sort of work that into the northern plot of this show. Like, the Starks are, or the Starks and the Targaryens, Jon Snow and Daenerys, are the key factors that made Game of Thrones work so much. So if House Stark is non-existent in this new series, obviously they have a role, but it's nowhere near as great as, as, as the original series. They can expand upon it. Maybe the Starks from this era were more in touch with the Targaryens in power, and maybe they investigate some of the Ice Dragon rumors. That gives them, you know, a sort of uh, leeway to give us several episodes exploring, exploring further mysteries. And with, you know, Dan and Dave were friends with George R. R. Martin, but I think Ryan Condal is sort of like 
bigger friends with him, right? Like they've been working. This show has been in development since 2016. And I don't think Condo knew he was going to be a showrunner, but they, him and Martin have been shooting ideas and, and conversing about this show for a while. So I'm pretty sure they've already talked about how to expand on the source material. But anyway, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you could please do me that massive favor and slap a like on this video. Like goal is going to be 42069. <laughs> all right. Long night. Wow.